uh, before, let's get some thank yous out of the way before we can really have fun here. Uh, then thank you to the VC Arts Council, Simi Valley Cultural Association, Actors Repertory Theater of Simi, Get Loud Movement, University Collective of Ventura County, Pride Youth Theater Alliance, Tie the Knot, Oxstar LGBTQ Community One Step, uh, Vez, Seneca for Agencies, and Oxnard Performing Arts Center. All right, uh, so we're going to get started with our very first mentor mentee pairing with Victoria and Elio. Uh, Victoria is a mentor and founder of Oxnard LGBTQ, and uh, Elio is a junior at Rio Mesa High School in Oxnard, California. They're president of their GSA and is a part of the marching band where they had, uh, hold the title of Wood Wins Captain. Uh, welcome, Victoria, to share their projects. Woo! <laughs> so, but I'm going to call them and they will do their introduction and then we'll show you guys our musical uh, program that we did. Or part of the program. Uh, one second. Yes. Okay, they can hear you. So, awesome. let me pull up the questions really quick. I only have jokes for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elio, what is your project? All right, so my project is uh, a piece of music that I've been working on, that I composed, uh, which has multiple tracks. Uh, piano, some bass, uh, and yeah, that's, that's for projects. <laughs> and uh, what materials uh, did you use and what did we use? Okay, so the materials that we used uh, were uh, my computer, uh, we used Soundtrack, which is a uh, like a recording software that, that was pretty cool that I was familiar with before. Um, and we use, I used my guitar, my, my flute to kind of lay down some, like a rough draft of what the project was going to be. And uh, also uh, a mini keyboard that uh, Vicky got for me, which, which I was really happy to use because my other keyboard would not connect to my computer. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so a MIDI keyboard is just uh, like a little keyboard you connect. It's not your typical big display. It's just something you connect to the computer, and that's what we use uh, with the program that they mentioned, which is called Soundtrap. It's an open source, uh, like, digital audio uh, interface. And that was really cool to use. Um, I wish I could show you guys, but we don't have the, uh, the image of it right now. But um, So I'll go a little bit about uh, how, how we went or how we went about uh, creating the song um, and how we started. Uh, so I asked Elio, you know, what's what's your vibe? What do you like to listen to? What do you want to create? Um, and Elio mentioned, you know, they like jazz. They like they like different types of music. So how did you go about starting and creating this project, Elio? Um, so I went about starting a fresh creating this project by like thinking of what kind of vibes I really enjoy. Like like you just said right now, like I like jazz stuff. So. Um, I was in jazz band before and I thought the kind of um, feel that I want for my project or my uh, original composition would be something jazzy or something that gave me like spooky vibes or something, something like that. All right. And uh, what parts of this process did I best support you in? Oh, you best supported me uh, in feeling motivated to continue the project um, and with um, getting like my ideas out of my head because I'm not very good at getting the process started. Like I'm good at 
creating the idea of like, oh, this would sound cool, and so with this, and you helped me like really plan and start how like, on how to continue the process of writing the song. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, bumps on the road, which is coming to our next uh, question: is what road bumps did we have, if any, and did we encounter any along the way? Oh yeah, we did encounter some road bumps. Um, the process did not go as smoothly as I wanted it, as we both wanted it to. Um, school uh, got in the way a lot, and extracurriculars. Um, I uh, uh, I had recently gotten my wisdom teeth out, and it set me back in school a, a week. So I had a lot of missing assignments and projects I had to catch up on, and I hadn't done as much of the the diversity collective project that I wanted to and it just set me far back and I'm still not caught up and so I'm, I just this, this was that really set me back well we got you got a lot done it's just we couldn't finish the whole song like Elio wanted um but yeah we did have some robots and it's spectrum collaborative not diversity collective <laughs> um but but uh, we'll go on to the next question is, what did you learn over the last 12 weeks? Um, over the last 12 weeks, I learned to manage my time wisely um, and really, and write down what I need to work on. Like, I need to do this, this is how I wanna, just time management skills is what I really need to work on. Okay. Oh, yeah. And um, how do you hope to continue developing these skills? Do you plan on finishing the song? I, I do plan on finishing the song. I, I feel like it was a bit over ambitious to begin with, and I need to just slow down and get what I really need out and flow with it. Um, yeah. Well, you got this, Elio. You, you can finish that song for sure, because I know you have a ton of other songs um, in your brain, so I know you'll come up with something really quick, except especially with this program that we use. It's pretty pretty cool to use. Um, all right, so thank you so much, Elio. And did you want to tell them your pronouns by any chance? Oh, yes, yeah. uh, my pronouns are he, they. He, they. So um, I guess the audio file is having some trouble, so I'm going to play it with uh, the phone. So I'm going to hang up on you now. Elio, you want to give your thanks? Um, yeah, thank you, everybody, everyone. I hope all your projects uh, came out amazing. I know they did. Um, have a good rest of your weekend. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Woo! Audio file. If only I had like waiting music in the background. <laughs>
Kelly on the horn, but uh, are there any questions uh, from our audience uh, that Victoria might be able to field? I am this short, everybody, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much. Thank you. Woo! Right. We'll uh, keep it moving right along. Uh, next up, we have uh, mentor mentee pair from the Simi Valley Group. Uh, with mentor, podcaster, and musician Turner, and uh, his mentee, Ren, who is an aspiring artist and actor, with a presentation uh, called When the Sun Rises. Woo! Hi, folks. Hello. Uh, so, yes, we worked on a project together. It's called When the Sun Rises. Uh, would you like to kind of describe a little bit about it? Yeah, it's basically this kind of story I've had in my head for years at this point, and it's slowly been developing over time, and I thought, hey, why not make it my Spectrum project? Uh, so, uh, on the next slide, I'll start to explain some things about it. So, uh, this is the map of a part of the world that the story takes place with the three main kingdoms um, and the Ceteria Empire, Kingdom of Leowen, and Agradso. Uh, in between, this is a map of the biomes. Uh, the main area of focus is just like this forest, and then there's mountains to the north and south. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. I used uh, website that Turner sent me that's really useful and really cool. Um, next slide. So in this world, there it's a high fantasy setting, uh, and there is a system of magic, which is the four basic elements, air, earth, fire, and water, and then Etheria, which is kind of like every other division of magic, so like summoning or uh, necromancy or whatever, whatever you can think of, basically. Um, and the main character of the story, uh, Lancelot, is a magic user, and that's a big part of his character. Uh, next slide. So, uh, I do not have word, uh, words on the slide for the story, view, uh, story overview, um, but basically the main character, Lancelot, was born in a kingdom with no magic. Uh, and he runs away to the forest I previously mentioned and finds out that his mom is, was a powerful sorcerer, but she's now dead. Um, but she can still talk to him and tells him, like, hey, you have magic too, that's so cool. Um, so then he goes to the kingdom of Leowen, which is uh, kind of a, your traditional medieval uh, kingdom, lots of white, the main theme of the kingdom is white. Um, and he stays there for a while with the king and the king's brother, and he goes, he grows close with the king's brother. Um, but eventually he finds out that the king and the queen are using him for his magic and basically exploiting him to get what they want. So he runs away again to the kingdom of Agradisil and finds out that that kingdom uh, was started because of a rebellion uh, in Leowen. So they ran away and made a new kingdom, which is all like, dark and black, um, so there's the contrast between white and black. Um, he also loses his arm on the way, that's not really important. Um, <laughs> 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 then, uh, so the people in the Light Kingdom of Leowen find out that Lancelot is at the Grafstil, and they think that they're holding him hostage, but he's really there of his own accord, and he's like learning magic, and that's where he meets his love interest and stuff. Um, so the kingdoms are on the verge of war, and eventually that spoils over and they do go to war. Uh, but like right before the big epic battle, um, the mom takes Lancelot into like a separate pocket dimension where he is stuck there and he can't get out, and he finds out that the mom is actually evil as well. Uh, and she was using the previous king, uh, or the current king, she manipulated him, and the king's brother was supposed to be the king, but she manipulated the father. 
blah, 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 she's evil. Um, <laughs> then Lance, you know, uses his magic, because he's like, hey, I'm powerful too, uh, and breaks out of the pocket dimension. Um, and then they go to battle, and the king's brother kills the king, uh, he becomes king, and then everything's happy. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Uh, so, next slide. Uh, the main themes are obviously the big opposing forces of black and white, and my big focus was that, like, not all things that are white are good, and not all things that are black are evil, um, which is why the kingdom of Leowen, the white kingdom, is the evil one. Um, and all of the like evil people are uh, established in white, and all of the good people are established in black. Um, there's also a lot of like inner turmoil, man versus man, uh, and the idea of revenge, and also like man versus nature, like fighting destiny or whatever. Uh, yeah. So on the next slide is my character design for Lancelot. Um, or my character sheet for Lancelot. Uh, he's the main protagonist. Uh, he's trans because no trans people. Woo! <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of an idiot, but I love him, so. <laughs> uh, and on the next slide is his love interest who is one of the j no wait, it's his mom. Never mind. He's not a mom. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> um, yeah, this is his mom. Uh, again, like all white and stuff. She's also an elf. Um, and yeah, she's pretty, but she's evil. So, and she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, made a lot of villain traits. Yeah. Okay. And then on the next slide is his love interest, uh, who's one of the like general people of uh, Agrasil or the Dark Kingdom. Yeah, and he's a lot, like, more, he's still an idiot, but he's uh, <laughs> more, like, level-headed than my slides. Um, yeah. Uh, and the next slide, I believe, yeah, is Leowen. So here's a sketch I did, basic sketch, and then some inspiration. Uh, so it's a traditional monarchy with a king and a queen, and then the king's brother, who's still considered a prince. Um, and there's like tiers of the kingdom, which are separated by social status. So the higher you go, the like more high class and well off people are, and the lower you go, uh, it's more like poor people in the commonwealth. And there are a lot of strict laws pertaining magic, uh, because they don't like magic that much, and they want it to use it for themselves. Uh, on the next slide is the Grab Cell of the Dark Kingdom. So again, some more sketches and inspiration. Um, and this is a democracy, so there's a council which the love interest Damien is a part of. Um, and since it's like a rebellion city, it's a lot smaller and has like temporary and permanent buildings. Um, and it also does not have any laws regarding magic. Because, yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. <laughs> it's not a dictatorship. Um, and then the next slide is some concept art of the characters. Uh, the, so the one on the far right is Lancelot. The one next to it is one of the generals. That's the mom and the kingdom sketches again. Um, the next slide is some more concept art, concept art but with color. Wow. Uh, and they were actually art assignments, but I was like, you know, free art and free grade, so. There we go. Uh, yeah, and then the next slide are some storyboards. Because this is an animatic, I forgot to mention that. It's an animatic, yay. Uh, <laughs> I didn't actually get to storyboard the whole thing. The last like minute or so is just improvised because I did not have time for any of this. Uh, but I made you, and a lot of this is actually cut, so my bad. <laughs> um, and then the last slide is the actual animatic. I hope you enjoy. Woo! Fantastic.
Oh, sorry. Loved it. I forgot to mention, if it looked unfinished, it very much is. That was the point of an animatic. It's like um, a building blocks for a real animation. So, yeah. Love it. Mm -hmm. uh, Rev, where did you get uh, your inspiration from this world? Um, pretty much like any high fantasy you like expect, like Lord of the Rings, Witcher, stuff like that. Um, uh, what, uh, what was your favorite part about this project? Um, character design, because I love character design, the, um, yeah, I just, it was a little hard for me not to just, like, put a load of detail into my designs, because I really like to do that, but I had to keep it simple, because if I was actually animating this, I would not want to animate all that detail. Yeah. Um, I will hand out the mic for some audience questions, but before we do that, I do want to stress how uh, incredible uh, Ren is at putting this whole thing together. Yeah. Uh, we were just chit-chatting about uh, worlds, and this was made, so that was incredible. So, you know, I am just uh, kind of in awe of your work, so I really appreciate you, Ren. Yes. Woo! It was great. The music was great. Royalty-free music? Yeah, of course. Uh, make sure to cite all your sources when using royalty-free music. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much.
I have a script I'm working from. Okay, uh, I can't memorize all of this stuff, but I'm pretty good. So uh, next we have, uh, from the Oxnard group, we have mentor and artist Luis with mentee Ruby, who hopes to make art as a career one day, uh, with a painting display titled The Real Reflection. Uh, so give us just a sec to get all set up here. Doing the hair and the reflection and the face. 
Uh, yeah, so I really admire Ruby for being consistent with their um, attendance and being willing to sit down and learn and have conversations going back and forth. Um, and if we ever decide to like, if Ruby ever decides to come back, I would love to have him again as my mentee. Woo! Awesome, thank you so much. So do you have any questions from the audience for Luis and Ruby? Oh, we have one back here. What was your favorite part of the project? My favorite, oh, oh my gosh. Um, my favorite part of the project was um, coloring in the, the whole painting. It was really fun mixing the colors together and experimenting with like the paint. Awesome, Luis, do you have a favorite part to share from this process? Um, I think it was just the whole concept going back and forth because uh, I think it was pretty interesting that you were very, uh, what's the word I'm for? Uh, inv not involved, but like you're very fascinated with the prospect of like, uh, you, you know, using toxins, toxins within the makeup. And the fact that you were like very uh, immersed in it or invested in the subject, which I guess like uh, a lot of kids your age probably went out like history very much. Um, so that's pretty cool for the fact that you're willing to learn, sit down and do research, which a lot of artists uh, and writers um, should do whenever they're you know trying to do a subject they're not familiar with. All right, anybody else? Oh, I think I see two. One back here. Uh, I just wanted to know, was there a specific like, reason for the choices of color and the alcohol in it? Um, the choices were because of like a color wheel. So at first I chose like, um, like orange, and then I didn't know what to do for like the dress, so I picked the opposite of orange, which was blue. Very cool. All right, we have one down here. Right. I just, I just want to commend you, Ruby, for your, your social and moral obligation to, um, to um, inform people about this subject matter. I think that it's really commendable mm -hmm. for somebody your age to be so um, aware and so invested in in um, giving information out to people. I think that it's just amazing, and I I think you're just a wonderful human being for doing that. Thank you. You're welcome. And this time around, I wanted to focus more specifically something closer to me. 
which was my neighborhood, and to figure out how to tell a story that was more personal to me specifically. Um, for the process, my mentor taught me how to use a camera because I had never uh, even touched a camera before. Wow. And they coached me to take pictures before I felt comfortable doing it on my own. They also helped me to edit them to decide which ones would fit the theme and to print and display them. For road bumps, we had to cut down on certain locations and photo ideas that we had in the beginning just because of locations being closed and because of running out of time. We also struggled to use new photo editing programs, but we decided to just stick to what we know in the end. Over the last 12 weeks, what I've learned was how to use a camera, how to look at different angles to get a better shot, composition for photography, and how to mount photos to display. Um, and in the future, I want to continue to learn more about composition of photos to take so that uh, in, when I have my phone, I can just like uh, experiment and try new things, as well as finding new photographers and styles of photography so that I can get inspired. Okay, can we get the next slide? So um, we're gonna go over the pictures blown up here. Again, if you wanna look more detail, you can go in the lobby. Uh, so the first one is titled, School's Out for Summer. All right, so I not only attended the school in this picture, but I also remember learning to ride a bike for the first time here one summer. I chose this location because of the man many memories I have of school being out for the summer. And this photo series is taking you from where Ben got out of school for the summer to like summer adventure. So can we get the next slide? This one is titled Home and it was taken near the street where I used to live in when I was growing up. So over many years of walking home, these signs at the corner of the streets became familiar. Now that I live in another neighborhood, the site is nostalgic. I chose this location because it reminded me of the street I grew up in. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. This one is titled Seven. As a kid, nothing was more exciting to me than going to the 7-Eleven for a Slurpee and some snacks. I chose this location because of the memories I have of sneaking out with my brother to get snacks and riding <laughs> my bike or walking there every summer. Next, please. <laughs> Kid obstacle course. Going to the local park was always fun when I was younger. There was a playground, but when I went there to take pictures, it was the squiggly bike racks that I remembered since I used to run through them as a kid like an obstacle course. <laughs> This one is titled Memories. My brother has a summer birthday, so when I went to the store to take some pictures, I remembered all those birthdays that had happened over summer break. I also love the black balloon in between the very binary stereotypical blue and pink balloons and found it relatable as a trans person. <laughs> this one is titled Soccer Game. As a kid, I played lots of sports, so these soccer fields instantly reminded me of when I played in a co-ed soccer team. It was fun being able to get a break and forget about school, gender, everything else, and just play a game with my friends and teammates. This one is titled El Paletero. El Paletero is perhaps one of the most iconic and recognizable sounds as a kid. The jingle, the ice cream truck, and the wall of delicious varieties of popsicles and ice creams was like being on cloud nine. Taking the shot took me back to those times. This one is titled The Towers. Coming home in the car, I always saw these tall towers from afar and instantly knew that where they were, there was home. Taking this picture, it reminded me of my neighborhood and the colors of summer sunsets. Mm -hmm. This picture is titled Shoelace Post. When I was younger, the lampposts seemed to be so tall. I remember being very young, seeing the shoes hanging from the lampposts and wondering how they managed to get them up there. <laughs> this one is titled Staying Cool. One thing that screams summer to me is ice. I remember going to the store to buy ice, so when I saw the bag of ice, I instantly remember the summer heat. This one is titled Snack Isle. The snack Isle was my favorite when I was younger. For this picture, I wanted to try and take it from a lower height to show how I would see it when I was little. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Oh, we have one back here. I just want to say, growing up in Oxnard, like it just took me back. Yes. Yes. So thank you, Ben. Thank you.
I just wanted to say thank you as well because, again, for me, nostalgia, no, very nostalgic for me too. I think our kids nowadays um, don't get to see or don't get to experience what we experienced as kids, um, me being obviously older, but um, just having fun and being kids. I think the technology kind of consumes that now, um, but just to give them a glimpse of like, you know, yes, you know, there are those times and to kind of, you know, just separate themselves from the technology. I'm glad it reminded me of that. Thank you. Guess what I found? <laughs> 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 um, you used a photo editing uh, program, right? Which I'm the one who called them about it. It's called GIMP, right? It's a free editing program, but did you find it hard to use or it was a little hard? Yeah, we found it hard to use because uh, we had never seen it before and we tried it. I managed to do some funky edits, but in the end we chose like just uh, very minimal editing. Yeah. Cool. I have one more. Cool. Oh, we have another question. Yeah, well, you, you mentioned this was your first time taking pictures and I think you did a fabulous job with all the pictures that you took. Thank you so much. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Um, your stand there <laughs> the, the drum <laughs> stool it's called improvising <laughs> about the things that we have in common that we like. The overarching theme was nature. And I was really excited to work with someone who was as excited about bugs and birds as I am. It's kind of rare. So, super cool. We decided to sculpt a world out of found art pieces. So, the materials that we use, you should take a closer look in the lobby on your way out. Started with this piece of wood that Lee's dad will cut out for us, thank you. So we started from the basics, building the sculpture by painting where we were gonna place the objects on top of the wood base. So, had a general idea, Crystal Lake is the centerpiece, obviously, but Leaf also envisioned this magical waterfall and a forest, so that's a lot of things to incorporate in a small sculpture. So the items that we use are wood, acrylic paint, glue, hot glue, and the crystals inside the lake consist of quartz, quartz, aventurine, opalite, and lapis lazuli chips. We use also stones, which are, some of them are, I believe, slate, sandstone, found from the ground. Um, there's foam, two different types of foam, a handful of different types of moss, plastic figurines, and silk flowers. Leaf, would you like to talk a little bit about your experience doing this project? Did you enjoy sculpting something from nothing? Yes, it was really fun because I've never done something like this before. So I was able to like actually use my imagination and come up with something and then have it in my hands. That was the best part because I got to actually just like play stuff around physically, like 
It's like I can touch it from right here. Mm -hmm. I can just touch it. It's amazing. And I love it so much. It's so cool. <laughs> I was really excited. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought that part was really exciting too, to conceptualize this piece of art and then build it from scratch, from nothing, just from your magical imagination. Yeah, it looked like an avocado. Yes, the piece of wood. Yeah, the wood was green and it looked like an avocado. So that was really cool. I like that. I should have an avocado. At heart, is, it is an avocado. <laughs> but yeah, it was a really neat experience. I thought the experience of coming together at Spectrum, one of the neatest parts I thought was being in that supportive space as artists and creatives together open doors for trying new things, which was exactly what we had the opportunity to do together. So did anything come up that was challenging for you in this project, Lee? Um, Working with these materials? Kind of, yeah. There's a lot like of different like, materials. It's like figuring out what to do with like, the rocks. So I don't want it to be too heavy because I don't want to be able to carry it. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have strong arms. Um, mm -hmm. So then that's how I thought of like putting like foam in the middle instead of like just a bunch of rocks. So there's foam in the middle. And then there's like a bunch of light rocks on the outside. So it's actually not that heavy. It was too much actually. It was hard. Right. <laughs> so do you want to talk about the process of building this piece from the start? Like how we built the layers? Um, who how did we build the layers? I kind of forgot. So we started by painting, like I mentioned, we painted the lake, we painted oh, yeah. the green for the forest, and we painted gray for where the waterfall was going to be. And then the next step was the stones. And that was probably Maybe both of our favorite parts. That was fun the part. Project. The stones were so fun. A little aggression therapy, which is important. Yeah, we got a, I was able to, um, since the stones were like, what, sandstone and yep. stuff like that, you could like smash them together and they'll break apart and they'll be like thin little pieces, which is how I was able to like glue them onto the foam. So they were so thin, I could just like cover the foam with it. It was so cool. It was like the most fun thing ever. <laughs> Yeah, we broke them up to different size stones also to build this up to be kind of layered. Larger stones in the center of the waterfall, little stones around. And then after that, what was the next part that we did? Um, it was like, oh yeah, it was the crystals. Mm -hmm. Crystals, crystal lake, obviously. Um, crystals were really fun too, because you just sprinkle them all around. Mm -hmm. Put animals in them. Yep, all the little figures Leaf chose. So there's mushrooms, there's flamingos, frogs, chickens, turtles, chickens, <laughs> and then the forest made out of flowers, which was Leaf's vision as well. A lot of the items that we used also, I would say about half of them were found. So the stones came from outside. Some of them we picked up at a taco truck. Some of them came from my neighbor's yard. And those are so good. I love those tacos. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Those are the best tacos of my life. <laughs> and then adding texture, so we purchased some of the items. We had a lot of the same flowers at home, um, but the creatures were purchased. And then the moss to add some texture to the forest, make it a little more interesting than some big grass. Yeah, Leaf, what was your favorite part besides smashing the stones? Oh, point? great. That's difficult. Oh, the waterfall. The water was amazing. I thought I was so smart for the idea with the hot glue, like hot glue and spraying a little bit of the little um, crystals in it with like foam as you know, with water. Yeah, that's so smart me. I'm yeah, so smart. to make it look like dripping water was kind of a hard thing to actualize yeah. on here. So we brought hot glue guns and just drizzled it all down and we broke up some white foam to look like foam in the water and the waterfall. Not my idea though. It's not like five minute crafts, like who knows how many years ago. Yeah. Really wanted to try that. That's good. And I did. Woo! So <laughs> yeah. So we created this mystical world together, and it was an awesome experience. It was. This yeah. was an amazing experience ever. Thank you, Leaf. I know. I felt like it was a little serendipitous to be paired up with someone who is as interested in nature as I am. It's really exciting, and I was happy to support and do this project with you. Me too. It was amazing. Woo!
we we structured it pretty well. I would say we finished right around that 12 week mark. Yeah, a little bit before. We structured, yep, a little bit before. We saved a little time for talking about birds and bugs. Um, but yeah, because it was structured layer by layer, building the piece from the ground up, it took us, you know, those two hours we had together every week about about 10 weeks. Okay, anybody else? Oh, I see one back here. Um, okay, so, so two things. One, I really love this uh, collaborative approach that you both did together. And it really, um, like, it's the, the project itself that really brings the people together. Mm -hmm. So that was just one thing I wanted to say. Um, and then the next question was, what did you get from the top of the that you emailed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was some rocks. I have some rocks. Truck. It was like, um, it was like 10 to 5 on the truck. Yeah, it was rocks. It was rocks. <laughs> I could talk about those tacos all day because those were so good. Those were heavenly. I literally ascended into the sky. It was like, <laughs> wrong. Ooh, I see Victor. Uh, yeah, sorry. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just wanted to say, uh, you mentioned you have figurines in the display. Um, without choosing a week, please. <laughs> Which one's your favorite? Um, <laughs> it has to be this one specific with the flamingo, the one that we dropped and we broke and that everyone was like going crazy about because we killed it, but we blew its head back on and gave it a flower crown. So that's my favorite one because it has a lot of like, backstory. yeah, it's a huge backstory. It's like, it's like a drama. I could literally make a whole movie on it. I should. <laughs> okay. It's the flamingo with the crown. Yeah. yeah. Liz, do you get the flamingo too? I think so, yeah. I think it's got a lot of character. Psychotic. Fantastic. Well, let's have one more round of applause. Woo! Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I'll take that so you guys very carefully. Right, so yeah, make sure you take a look at the lobby because there's some very amazing detail you can only really see up close uh, for that one. So next up, uh, from the CME group, uh, we have mentor Gabby, who is currently pursuing her community uh, teaching arts certificate at CSULA. And mentor Vic, artist and performer with Actors Repertory Theater of CME. They worked with mentee Kenzie, who is unable to attend tonight, but they will present on her behalf. Uh, Firm finds the portal. Um, 
the book they discover leads them to a portal to another realm. And in this realm, they discover a new futuristic world of nature and to friend surprise, fellow cyborgs. Um, so next slide, please. So this is the start of the story. Um, I wish Kenzie were here to tell you a little bit more about some of the amazing little details she added, but a lot of the story building that we did was about Mads and Fern and their relationship dynamic as siblings. Um, so on the top uh, left, that is Mads in her bedroom, and then on the top right, that is Fern in their bedroom. And this is like right before they get the call that their brother has uh, died. And next slide, please. Um, so this is the scene when they discover the portal. Um, Ma Magnolania is the name of this new world. Um, we did so much story building for this. <laughs> we spent so much time just imagining um, what uh, this world that Fern was going to be visiting. Um, and so a lot of the dynamic was about Mads who Later, there's a big secret, I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys in the next chapter, but um, Mads really does not want them to go to this new world. And there's a reason why their mother actually came to our present day world. Um, and so, yes, they open this book and it transports them to this new land called Magdalena. Um, and we wanted to make, uh, uh, Mackenzie and Cade really wanted to make the present day Earth seem very like, boring and dry, so they decided they wanted to do um, no color for present day Earth. And Magdalena was going to be kind of this cool, like, Wizard of Oz moment where everything would be in color. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a little bit of concept, which uh, Vic had a big help in uh, helping Kenzie and Cade uh, design like the characters. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about it, Vic? Uh, yeah, so I sort of helped Kate and Kenzie near the beginning of the program. Um, I helped them sort of pick out ideas for the characters and like what they wanted their aesthetics to be. So um, what they told me is they wanted um, Fern to be very punk-ish. And I was like, oh, I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> and, um, I did help them like finalize designs, especially with Fern. I gave them like references and like kind of clothes that they could put them in. And I did the same with um, Matt, Matt's. Matt's. Yeah, yeah Matt's. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was very fun to watch the process. Um, I could tell that they were both very passionate about it. And Kenzie especially was like so eager to learn. Like she asked me how to draw a shoe once and she just listened so intently. <laughs> like a very simple like tutorial and it's just it was very endearing to see. <laughs> yeah uh, so on the left here is some of the hands that Kenzie practiced drawing um, that was what Kenzie cited as being um, one of the roadblocks for the project was drawing hands so uh, she practiced a lot of different poses for hands um, and also in terms of medium she wanted to try a new medium out so she chose watercolor pencils um, and she said that was also interesting, a lot of trial and error, and she learned um, through doing this project that she loves watercolor and wants to keep practicing with it. Um, she wants to improve on her uh, blending and shading, is what she wrote. Um, and then on the top right is kind of just some like uh, location or like imagining what the world of Magnolia would look like. And so it was very um, plant and uh, like cyborg based because everybody in Magdalene is a cyborg. And um, Fern, their name is Fern. And so there's you know, a little hint, hint, um, maybe about Fern's origins. And um, so yeah, and then the center is color that uh, they decided they wanted to do. This was between Kate and Kenzie, kind of like outfits and skin tones for each of the characters. So the top is like Fern's uh, color scheme, and then Mads is the second one. Uh, the last one is Rain, who comes in in a later chapter, and that's a love interest of Fern. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the last slide that we prepared, uh, but this is uh, kind of like the end of the story when um, 
you know, uh, stuff's about to hit the fan, basically. <laughs> um, so it's kind of meant to be like a cliffhanger. And so this is the portal that um, they recently came back from uh, Magdalena. And this is kind of when Mads and Fern, they have a sibling conflict moment because they, they, just, they need to decide on whether they want to keep visiting or potentially living in the new world. Um, but yeah, that is the last slide. Um, Kenzie has been a joy to work alongside the past few months. She's a kind, energetic, funny, and extremely creative person. Um, working together on this story created an escape for us and gave us an opportunity to imagine a new world together that could be more kind, more accepting, and something for us all to strive for. So on the way out, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the comic and stay tuned for the rest of the chapters. Woo! Thank you guys so much. All right, uh, thanks for not hearing answer questions, but uh, we have uh, her mentors. So, do you have any questions for Yvonne? I just have a comment too. Okay. Oh, you want to go first? Please, sure. Yeah, what is a watercolor pencil? You want to? Yeah. <laughs> So a watercolor pencil, it's basically like a colored pencil except it's water activated. So you're gonna draw it on the paper like you would with a regular pencil and then you just take water and a watercolor brush and you can taste it that. Cool. about Magdalena, um, it was always energizing when we would have conversations about like what it meant for Fern to find this place where they could feel accepted and celebrated and yeah, it was really nice. Awesome, well thank you so much for sharing with me. to it, but I know that Mason would really want to continue it. Um, so I'll be presenting on his behalf, but um, essentially what Mason envisioned for this song was to have it comment on the hypocrisy of society, most of the times with mental health. Um, he really emphasized how mental health can be stigmatized or even ignored sometimes, right? So he wanted to have this message where um, there's two voices. And so there's society's voice that's kind of saying, you know, oh, it's okay, you know, it's all in your head, you're just overreacting. And the other side of, you know, children, youth going, no, I have this experience, I have this problem, you know, you should take it seriously. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read the lyrics section by section because he did have, um, like I said, these two voices. And so each one has its own. Um, has its own story behind it, so to speak. So the first part is, it goes, society's broken when the wheels start rolling. Now everyone's controlling, but they're not all knowing. Now all y'all are going, crying and throwing, but yet you don't know why children are broken and hatred is growing. Children are being shown that society messed up. They're asking for change and are finally raising up. They're asking for more help, but society won't let up. 
Maybe it's about time that the children light up and finally go all out. So this is the voice of the youth, of course, who are kind of speaking out against, um, are speaking out against society, right? And how it can be broken sometimes. They're not always paying attention to these issues that are being brought to the surface. So the second part is actually society's voice. And it goes, well, hello, little boys and girls, any little they and thems. How about you all just go to your rooms and just go back to crying in bed? You're all just on your own now, so just go back to being all right. It's just all in your head, so just go back to your life. And there was a note for when he intended to make this into a song. He um, noted that he wanted to extend the beat for about four beats. And his reasoning for this was that it was almost like the rhythm in the song was a heartbeat. And so by extending the beats in between sections, he wanted to extend how there's kind of this silence between, right? There's this silence that comes after um, the society, at least in his song, um, it's followed by silence because you don't really know how to react. So the third part is, once again, um, children replying with retaliation and anger. And so it goes, this is not fantasy, this is reality. We've had enough with this catastrophe. Society's thinking we're fine and everyone's broken inside. Now we are done with all this trash while everyone is fighting with this and that. Now everyone is gonna see that society's word isn't key. And um, it kind of just transitions into the last part, which is society's final opinion with children having the last laugh. So it's kind of um, this clash between them, right? But it's still in children's voice and says, fine, fine, you finally win. You'll get your way, but we'll never admit it. So it's over now. So that part is society's voice, and then it ends with children saying, until we come back. And he wanted to emphasize that this is also extended for five to six beats, so it kind of fades out. Um, I know that when we were talking about the song, he had a lot of really good ideas about how the rhythm really reflects the message of the song. But as I mentioned, we didn't get to produce it together. Um, and so we really just got the songwriting done, um, the songwriting part done. Um, but yeah, so that was our project. And I hope that, you know, whether Mason returns to this project um, when he has more time to the program, or just does it on his own, it seems like it has a lot of potential. Um, his name is Carl and his pronouns 
are he, him. Um, when we started the program, Carl mentioned to me that he was a digital artist, but he really wanted to get into writing, so we explored his favorite anime, Jujutsu Kaisen, and he made a short form biography on the character of Megumi Fushiguro. Um, the medium that we ended up using was Google Drive because it was easy for me to help guide him through the writing process and ask, ask guiding questions and help with editing. It was also really cool because there were a couple of sessions where we would watch a little bit of the anime and then we would get into the writing just to help guide us a little bit. Unfortunately, my mentee did have some scheduling issues, so there were a few times that we didn't meet or his phone broke. And so the one cool thing was to, I would go on Google Drive and even if I couldn't get a hold of him because his phone was broken, he was still working really hard. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys. It's not finished because he wants to continue working on it and it's basically imagine a wiki page for a Megumi. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, one thing that he said he really enjoyed about the project was the ability to practice writing. He said he gained a lot of confidence. And one thing that he said he really enjoyed was he was able to then become top of his advanced English class, which I'm really proud of him. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that I was so, so proud of the writing that occurred. You know, he told me that he wasn't confident in writing at first, and he told me that he never wrote anything before and for me it was so hard to believe that he didn't really have any background in writing because for me this was amazing and minimal work on my end um, so that was really nice and my favorite part of the whole project was just seeing him grow as an artist Woo! Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, do you have any questions for julian carl's group Yeah. Um, did you notice any part of the section in the writing that maybe Carl had a hard time with? Um, so there's a lot of drama in Megumi's story. So I think one thing that um, needed some direction was um, telling it in a way where it wasn't repetitive, um, where we could elaborate on his character development and all the tragedy that he experienced in a way to guide you along the story versus kind of reliving it. Um, and then incorporating visuals was something that he wasn't too confident about, about where to place items. Um, and one cool thing was most of the time if I just um, gave him words of encouragement, he, he seemed to then find his, um, find his way with what he wanted with the project, which was really nice. All right, one more hand of applause for Julian. Yeah. Okay, we have one more group presenting tonight um, from CME Group, Mentor Joshua, who currently serves as a costume designer for the Actors Repertory Theater of CME, whose home we are in right now. Thanks again. Um, and Menti Kaylee, who has a passion for creative writing, are going to be sharing memoirs of one Vincent Porter. Woo! Uh, so my name is Joshua, and I'm the mentor, and this is, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kaylee, pronoun she, her. And we worked on the project together with which is called Memoirs of a One Vincent Porter. And so would you like to tell the audience a little bit about the project we worked on? Uh, so Memoirs of One Vincent Porter is a play I've been working on. I didn't get finished on this session, uh, just school and things, but I do have a scene, but I'll, I'll, ex I'll give you a little synopsis of what it's about first. Uh, Memoirs of One Vincent Porter takes place like 1700s um, colonial time period during like Salem witch trial era, but it's not clear. Um, and it follows um, the story of Vincent, who is a witch, um, but he's a guy. And 
I, um, I got this idea based off of um, a thing I saw where it was like a lot of men thought that only women could become witches because only women could be seduced by the devil. But um, <laughs> as we know, gay people exist, so <laughs> what if a man was well, seduced by the devil and became a witch? So it follows the story of Vincent who is in love with his best friend William. And it's a really dark story, to be honest. <laughs> um, and it kind of follows the story of his like jealousy and stuff driving him um, to do kind of bad things. Um, I'm really obsessed with this story. I kind of wish I'd given, I made like a 50 slide slideshow based on directorial concepts and all that stuff, but that wasn't my main focus in my project for Spectrum. So I wrote, I took a short scene from what I had written of Act One, and that's what I'm here to present tonight. Great, and what do you think they should know about what's going on with the characters before the scene we're going to see tonight. Oh yes, um, so uh, <laughs> this is uh, after Vincent has been living with William for a while, um, and it's a scene between Vincent and a, um, a servant of William's named Lee, and Lee's been trying to become friends with Vincent, but he's been very pushy about it. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of a breaking point scene for Vincent, but not entirely. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, is there anything else you want to let us know about the project, or shall we um, introduce our actors? Or I think that's all. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we will we will shall step off the stage as we allow you to enjoy a scene from Memoirs of a One Vincent Porter. servants about setting up an extra room. You once heard a visit? Well, I see you are completely oblivious. Why are you so upset? Upset to my You don't think upset. I'm stupid, do you? You clearly have some sort of feeling about all of this. Why does it concern you? My feelings are not for you to decide, and the reasons for them are not open for speculation. It concerns me because I care for you, Vincent. Gosh, I don't understand you at all. You seem to care for William greatly, but when you should be happy for him, you're only upset. I try to be your friend, but you only push me away. Friend? Oh, well, it seems your advances become clear every single day, and I try to ignore them, but you just keep pushing! I'm not in love with you, Lee, not by a long shot. How dare you? You think I only care for you because of love? I thought you wouldn't think that, but clearly I was mistaken. Leave me be, Lee. Gladly.
play and um, do you have anything else about the production of this that you'd like to mention about what it was like directing them? I was sort of acting as a stage manager. I was just making sure you were all set up and had your props and everything. So it was a it was a good experience for me and I enjoyed mentoring you, but what was it like directing? Um, it was fun, because uh, these two are like friends of mine. Um, <laughs> and it was fun directing with them after, you know, or directing them, uh, <laughs> after having done shows with them. They're very talented people. I'm very glad that uh, I can was to do this because the match immediately jumped on it. And they're like the perfect pairing, so. And, and how do you feel about directing in general? Is this something that you'd like to go forward with in a, in a career? Yeah, my, I'm so ambitious it's, that I have too much going on all the time. Um, but yes, I would love to direct, like, I'd love to, like, senior project next year, I might direct a show, I don't know yet. But I would love to continue pursuing, pursuing directing and especially playwriting is, a big thing I would love to continue to present. Great, so directing and writing. Do you have any questions from the audience? Okay, we have a question right here. here. So, Kaylee, um, you know that we're trying to get Pride Youth Theater Company started, right? Um, I would like to really encourage you to uh, finish this play and maybe have it be the first play that we produce, and I would be proud to produce it. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, definitely, um, it it's kind of been hard the past few months because I've been working on School totally. On. So I haven't been able to write it, but I, I actually recently started, like, actually saying that I'm rewriting some certain things. Right. No it. rush. No rush. But I would really love for you to, when you finish it, that you get a hold of me and we look at producing this play and putting it on its feet at the Black Box.